Sponsored by Wing Wing Technologies, one of the highest button counts in the industry. Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Time for the next naval war game and it is Suggestion 55, 1970s US Carrier Strike Group versus early 2000s US Carrier Strike Group. So, essentially, early 2000s Legacy Hornet and FA-18C versus Legacy Tomcat A and Skyhawk. This should be really interesting. We have the two carrier strike groups here. The red is the 1970s, the blue is the early 2000s. They are 150 nautical miles away from each other, about 170 miles. Equidistant is an island with some ground targets. Each fleet is moving towards the island at flank speed. So let's look at the older one first, shall we? We have CV-59 USS Forrestal. She is being protected by six Oliver Hazard Perrys. I did have the USS Kid class in game, but I haven't managed to test it yet, so that will do for now. This is much more about the aircraft carrier than the actual escort ships today, as you'll see as we go on. The air wing on the USS Forrestal today is 20 F-14A from the 70s. They are driven by AI at ACE skill level with these orders here. They are armed with four AIM-54 8 Mark 60 Phoenixes from the 70s, fuel tanks, legacy sparrows, legacy sidewinders. Their orders, which are identical in every way, I should say, to the blue equivalent today, is to scramble those 20 as quickly as possible, to go to waypoint one, and try and reach 36,000 feet there. I just put that in as a waypoint to stop some weird bugs happening. Uh, just take my word for it. Then get to waypoint two, which for the five different flights, a split kind of there, 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 and there, and orbit. They're just doing air superiority combat air patrol. Now, what's making this interesting today is we're also doing ground attack. So, we've also got 20 A4E Skyhawks and they are equipped with Mark 82 bombs and Legacy 70 Sidewinders. Those are tasked with taking off as soon as possible. Again, they constitute five flights of four. They are to get to this waypoint here and destroy these blue artillery pieces as soon as possible. As well, they have a AWACS, 26,000 feet. They also have human as well. It's going to be Simba. Say hello, Simba. or not. The reason I'm starting in airborne back here is because we're having trouble starting all 40 aircraft on a carrier controlled by AI and a human. So the human's going to start 50 miles back here and that's going to simulate him being on the carrier and having to wait to take off. Anyway, he is here somewhere and he's just on an identical F-14A and that's the red. The blue equivalent is a Nimitz class supercarrier. We've got the Theodore Roosevelt CVN-71 from the early 2000s and well now actually as well on board are the equivalent air wing of 20 fa-18 c lot 20s from the early 2000s equipped with i can't count that eight i think aim 120 c5s with modern sidewinders from the early 2000s as well i think yeah this is definitely all early 2000s tech basically a murder hornet uh, set up for as much air to air as possible. They are tasked with identical orders, identical waypoints, but just the reciprocal. So go there, and then the five flights are going to split and mirror the F 14. The important thing I'm trying to stress today is everything is identical in every way. So if you see any changes today in the way red and blue fly, it's how the game is programmed to run with certain era of jets. As well as the 20 cap, you've of course got the 20 air to ground. I've chosen what I consider will probably be the most effective for what they've got to kill. And this is all tested and tried out and it all works fine. They've got four Mavericks apiece, AGM-65s, with Block 1, aim 9 x Sidewinders, with uh, Amrams and Bags. Don't worry that they've only got four of them because there are, there's only a few targets to kill anyway. So uh, that won't be a problem. 20 of them, again, identical task. Go this way, the same direction equivalent direction, same speed, same height, same everything, and destroy these artillery pieces here. They have got their human 50 miles behind in a murder bog that is cannibal. Say hello. Hello, good morning. 
and of course they've got their AWACS there. So everything is as equal as we can make it, but these are 70s, these are early 2000s. I've always had a B in my bonnet that I never thought the F-18 was particularly good, especially at air to air. So it's really good chance for me to prove a point, and I may be completely wrong here, but it's going to be really interesting to see if the 1970s cap, very realistically modelled, we're using the heat blur model, the heat blur missiles and everything, it's as realistic as any simulation out there. How will they fare with identical orders against the early 2000s FA-18s with their fancy modern AMRAMs and their fancy modern sidewinders and stuff like that? I don't know, but I really want the 70s to win because it's just what I want. I really want those 60s, 70s Hawks and do better than the F-18s at ground attack as well. I think that would be absolutely wonderful, but uh, I have no doubt I'm massively outvoted on that. On the internet, uh, my predictions... Unfortunately, I'm almost certain that the modern one's going to win. The modern fleet's stronger, but like I said, ships shouldn't really play a part in this. It's mainly carriers getting the planes airborne quick enough and then the planes doing the work over here. And everything should be out of SAM range of the fleet if they do their job right, I suppose. Let's get my predictions from the boys. Cannonball prediction. Uh, I actually think the Phoenixes will, will tip it wow. in scale of the 70s, but on the air-to-ground side, it'll depend on the AA. AA, there is no uh, AAA, if that's what you mean. I, don't know, I think the Skyhawks will do just fine. Roger, okay. Uh, Simba, predictions before we go. So there was an update to the Phoenixes? Yes, that's, in why, that last that's why we're running it. That's, that's why we're running it, absolutely. So it's going to be interesting to see how that affects like the simulation now can like if, if we'd done this a month ago it wouldn't have and worked you're out there launching 70 mile shots it's like yep you, you'll be able to suppress the hornets even though the hornets carry the bigger missile load but now we're getting into how far and effective is the phoenix now so it'll be interesting roger that's a really good point simba made there um i've been doing these naval battles for what have we been doing simba six months or something now and this is the first time yes. we've we've done this with the tomcats and, and we waited deliberately to get to this point and that's because the phoenix is at uh, february 2022 they've been made as realistically as possible uh, they've been made worse basically when they came out two years ago in the game they were amazing they could kill everything they're slowly getting worse and worse and worse and worse and the reason that is, is to keep it in line with how they actually were in 1970s. You know, old analog system. There weren't tape recorders and things in them, uh, as opposed to the super modern digital AMRAMs. You know, it's a massive difference in tech. So they are now probably as accurate as they're ever going to get, you know, is what my sources tell me. So it should be a really interesting and realistic battle. Let's go fight! Kemba ready. Simba ready. This is going to be a really interesting piece of history, as far as I'm aware. No one's tried this before. I'm going to unpause in three, two, one, go. And server is holding up. I'm using my personal server today because I hope it can handle it. If not, we'll shift it over to the big server. Let's go and have a look at USS Forrestal. There she is in all her glory. Lots of very loud Tomcats aboard. One of the sexiest planes ever made. Now, this is very much about which aircraft carrier can launch its planes quickest. Because the guys who get the aircraft in the air quickest are going to have a massive advantage. Let's just say the Hornets get 10 up and the F-14s only get 4 up, you know, in X amount of minutes. That's going to make a huge difference. It's really important. Valued viewers, on the stream, please place your bets now. Do you think the Tomcats are going to win or do you think the Hornets are going to win? Might as well see the first one's up. They're making... Oh! The bomb's gone. <laughs> I didn't even see him. My first Tomcat... Oh. That's a very sexy thing. We're using the A model with the TF-30 engines. This is the original intercept model. It can get much faster than the Bravo model. It takes longer to get there, but it can get much faster than the Bravo model, which is a really, again, interesting piece of history. Ah, oh, the Hornets aren't up. The Tomcats are up, the Hornets aren't up. Why can't the supercarrier get airborne as quick as, as USS Forrestal? I'd say they're at least, at least 20 seconds behind. And that there is a slower aeroplane than the um, Tomcat as well. Now that could potentially be a massive disadvantage. I 
Nyom. Now that said, that's not the same thing as rate of launch. You never know, the Hornets could catch up because the Nimitz, once it gets going, actually has a really good rate of launch, as we've proved in a couple of videos. So rate of launch, we'll have to see. Uh, three, four Tomcats up, look at that. Now the Tomcats are programmed differently in the game. They do some weird wiggling about to get in formation. I can't stop it, I've tried everything to stop it. They even turn around and go backwards like that and then go forwards. Uh, it's really annoying. The, the Hornets don't do that, the Hornets just charge. Um, as it stands, he is not following orders. He's supposed to be putting his afterburners on and climbing again. That's why I put that weird waypoint in to try and induce him to do that. There's nothing I can do about it. It's just how they're hard-coded by um, Heatblur, the guys that made it. Whereas the ED modules, the FA-18, they're programmed to take off and just go and do what I said, which is like, which is this. That's what I asked them to do. So it would be nice for Heatblur to actually... Uh, pull their finger out and get that fixed. I think it's, you know, you wouldn't do that in real life. You wouldn't take off and turn around and go around your carrier and then, you know, I think it's silly, isn't it? Look, the guy's turned around, look. That's a scramble. He's going at stall speed in the wrong direction, which is just stupid. So, although they got up first and they got more planes up, I'm afraid to say that the Hornets are doing better because they've got, you know, they're going to get to the island quicker because they're not messing around. Uh, let's see where the humans are. Cannibal's there. Simba's there. Equidistant. They're not going to burn straight away because um, they've, you know, they've got fuel to think of. So they're going to cruise, uh, I imagine. Yep, we're in cruise at the moment. Wings back, though. Right, hopefully these should start being sensible now. Okay, we're starting to get a bit of sense now from the AI Tomcats. They are set to maximum skill level, by the way, so I can't make them any smarter as far as AI goes. Okay, finally, he's got his afterburners on. This is what I ordered him to do. Now, the only slight problem with... These have got in, what we call intercept en bomber engines or intercept engines. Uh, low spool and very low power when you're going slow and low. When they get high and when they get fast, an intercept engine like this gets really powerful. It's not right to say it's a ramjet because it's not a tool, but it sort of has a bit of a ramjet type of effect in the way it performs. In that once it gets high and once it gets fast, a bit, a bit like the Blackbird, in a way, uh, it really comes alive and starts making massive amount of power. All you know, internal combustion engines have pros and cons, and that's the pro of a TF-30. Whereas a Hornet is the other way around. It's optimised to work at all levels or at the whole spectrum. Now, that makes it very usable, pilot-friendly, computer-controlled, blah, blah, blah. The problem with it is it means it doesn't have that massive power like the Tomcat will at the top end. So these guys will top out before Mach 2, and won't even get to Mach 2, I doubt. Well, no, they won't. I know they won't. These guys will get to Mach 2 and blast through it on their way to Mach 3. One of the many reasons I prefer the Tomcat old-school tech, uh, these TF-30s. Now, this guy is finally... Those TF-30s are wound up. They're at the altitude they like. They're supersonic. Once they get above about Mach 1.4, if you're on a power graph, it just zips up like a turbocharger, just zooming up. Uh, I suppose we better look at distances. I mean, from the front lines, 90 miles. Um, that's probably too far to fire us. Yep, we're still out of range, even for the mighty um, uh, AIM-54 Phoenix. In terms of missiles, AIM-54 Phoenix is a... Uh, I don't know, it's like bringing a, uh, a giant cannon to a fight. Whereas this would be like bringing a, an M16 to a fight, a modern kind of rifle. The cannon is massive, it's heavy, it's expensive. It means you have to have a massive, heavy, expensive jet to carry it, like we've got here. This is, is very modern, um, compact, modular, but it means it doesn't have the raw performance. A bit like the engines, we were comparing engines. It doesn't have the raw performance of the M54, and the M54 will have more than double. There, in fact, the first M54 was out at 70 miles. We had a 70 mile shot, which seemed perfectly reasonable for an M54. As well as that, these guys are going pretty fast now. 800 knots, and look at that. Look at the tier 30 is whizzing up. The speed will just whiz up now. 900 knots, whereas these guys are stuck at 550, 550 and that's probably as fast as they can go. Um, at, you know, with the big loader carrying and whatnot. They're just, they're on maximum burn. Just can't get any faster than that. Uh, so these guys are twice as fast as the Hornets now. It took them a while to get wound up. All these missiles in the air. Look at one, two, three, four, five, six. Aim the 54s in the air. No AMRAMs, as, as expected. All firing from about 70 miles. These are just world-ending, massive, heavy, expensive missiles. 
hard to build. 70,000 feet and 2,000 knots of pure American pride right there. It's just a very, very different way of doing things. Early Cold War, late Cold War or post Cold War. Now look at, <laughs> well, and look at, look at these guys are now fully wound up. Well, 1,000 knots, 1,000 knots we're at now. I can't do that in my head, but it's a high mark. And they just will keep it faster and faster and faster. And these guys haven't even fired a missile yet. And they're about to have all levels of hell drop down on them. I'll remind you at this point, everything's fair. Everything's perfectly equal. And you can only feel sorry for these guys. They're doing their absolute best. That is as fast as that aeroplane can get. Okay. Can he dodge it? He's not even going to try. He is set up to dodge. And he hasn't. One Hornet dead. This guy is notching. He's seen the missiles and he's, he's evading. When I say see, I mean, he can, you know, hear it on his RWR systems. Still no AMRAMs out. No AMRAMs out. And an absolute world of death coming towards these guys now. He's trying to notch it. It's not going to work. Very, very, very hard to notch a Phoenix. Even in its instant weakened carnation. It's a incredibly powerful radar on it. Look at that. I mean, I don't know any other missile that probably could have done that. Maybe one of the big Russian ones. And here we see this. Oh, finally an AMRAM's come out. An AMRAM. AMRAM in the medium range probably is a better missile, but in the long range, I mean, you're dodging. You're dodging Mark IV telegraph poles. Missed. Right, this guy's finally TWS to the a bunch of AMRAM's out. So this guy's got lucky, and this guy's probably going to bite the bullet. Yeah. Now, the problem with these guys is they're actually going too fast to dodge. They're so fast. 1,100 knots. You can't dodge. 1100 knots. It's like Mark 2. Point, I don't know, 2.3 or something. I can't really work it out of my head. And so they're just running into those missiles. I mean, I guess it's a nice problem to have, but these guys are going too fast to 1200 knots. 1200 knots. Mark. I don't know. 2. Point, I don't know. Very fast. Uh, so, in a way, these guys actually had a benefit. Boom! Benefit of, uh, of, of having a lower top speed. I just. God, look at this. Amazing. Uh, much bigger warheads on the Phoenixes as well than the Amrams. That shouldn't matter. That should only matter when you're taking things like bears down, you know, big Soviet bombers. Of course, what the uh, Phoenix was designed to take down. I'm afraid to say the Blues have been wiped out by 1970s tech, which is kind of embarrassing. In, I repeat, the best simulator that's available today to civilians. There's actually uh, an interesting problem to talk about now. Do you mind, if, guys, if I mind if I pause it just for a second? Go ahead. So many things yep. to say to the Valley viewers. Now, if you're going, stop talking, Cap, you're an idiot. Um, that's fair and true. But a lot of people that watch don't actually know a lot of the stuff I'm talking about. A lot of people just getting into aviation. So it's quite important we do talk about it. The blue, sorry, the reds have just hamstrung themselves. They've defeated the blues so easily that they've caused themselves a massive problem now. They've now got into the SAM threat of these ships. This is a problem we didn't see coming. So because they've got so close to the ship, they're actually going to get shot by these ships, which is a problem. They should have really come in, realised they've gone too far and turned around. Obviously, they can't do that. They're AI, AI are stupid. They don't understand. They'll just keep charging in. So they've been so good against the Hornets that they're now going to get shot by the ships, and they won't survive against the ships. It's just impossible. So, again, nice problem to have, but a bit weird and unrealistic, but that's the way it is. Guys, unimposing three, two, one, go. I see how my humans do it. I can't actually, there's Cannonball going around the edge. 600 knots. That's just, I presume, about as fast as this thing can get. Maybe not. It's not even supersonic. Right, so the Tomcats have hit a wall now. SM2s, there they are. There's the SM2s. These are standard missile two. Very, very powerful missiles from the ship. It's more powerful than any of these air-to-air -air missiles because they're massive and heavy and expensive, obviously. Good notch. Notched an AMRAM. Notched, notched a modern C5 AMRAM. That was good. Uh, so these um, Tomcats have got to worry about this now, which is a worry they probably don't... Wow, look, he's fired into the fleet. What a f oh, his name's Seven. He's run out of Phoenixes. That's a problem. They only carry four Phoenixes in real life. You can equip them in for six in-game, but... I've been told by a real Tomcat pilot now that you could never actually get it off the aircraft carrier, so or certainly never land, so they wouldn't ever do it. This guy's about to get plucked from the sky. Oh, I saw that telegraph pole come in. Look at that. Telegraph pole's chasing this Tomcat down. He's so, so close to the fleet now, he's in a world of pain. One odd problem to have. Air 
Their SM2 is flying everywhere now. Look at this. If I do a, a shot of the fleet, look at the fleet firing. SM2s, SM2s, SM2s. I've got about uh, 500 or something there. Look at that. That's the problem with the Tomcat. They've done so well. Look what's happened. Aim9X going out. Not dodging that. Boom. In the face. Boom. Wow, this is really such a good fight. It's so representative. It's so interesting. Oh, he's down. Gonna have a sip of tea at this point, I think. SM2's coming in. Right. Pushed them right in the back. Look, right back to 20 miles. The Hornets are now 20 miles inside their carrier group. I'm slightly worried we're gonna run out of Tomcats now if they all run into this massive SM2 wall. Well, they certainly will run out of fuel if they keep banging their head against this SM2 wall. Cannibal's in now. I wonder where Simba got to. He's here. Oh, uh, I'm hanging back. Uh, that's fair enough, because his job is not really to kill bogs, per se. It's actually to defend the A4s. Uh, A4 is the only one that can win this. The guys who win it are the guys who kill the units quicker, the most units quicker. So, it's fair play. But the action's all here, as you can see. It's all Tomcats coming in. Now, these Tomcats are probably all out of Phoenixes now, so they're uh, pretty much surplus for use at this point. The America, Americans, the modern Americans need to get their S together, get reformatted with a bunch of F-18s and go for another charge. Again, this guy's out of fit. He's out of everything, apart from legacy sidewinders, which are pretty much useless. He's got an MLX coming in his face. Put him out of his misery. Boom. Dance the visage. Here comes, okay, here comes some more uh, Mark 60 Phoenixes. From the next group. Oh, look, they're coming all the way out here. 60 miles away from the group, just peppering Phoenixes. Now, that's not actually the best idea at this point because Phoenixes are brilliant against long range targets where the baddies are nowhere near the goodies. Because the goodies are near the baddies here, uh, you actually have massive problems when those missiles coming in, as you will see, I pretty much guarantee. Uh, Aim9L versus. Look at that, and Aim9L is about to kill a Hornet. Oh, he should have seen that and he should have flared. That's a him problem. He could have beaten that easily. Assuming he had flares left. Tomcats. Now, 20 miles away from the carrier. All the SM2s in the world coming out. Now, these Mark 60s are going to be really interesting. What they do, whether they even shoot down their own friends. It's very possible to happen at this point. More SM2s coming out. We have a merge and the first dogfight of the day. What would you want? Tomcat in a dogfight or a Hornet? I would want the Hornet because its modern tech will really help it in a dogfight. Its uh, helmet mounted display and its high off bore sight missiles are just much better, make it a much better dogfighter. Oh! In this configuration. Um, no matter how well you can turn, and this thing, this Tomcat can turn better than the Hornet, but it's not going to matter if you've got a missile fired at you way off bore sight. Look at this guy dodging telegraph poles. What a hero. I'm going to name him Hero Boss. Hero Boss is doing extremely well. It's getting into ACM with a Hornet. Only one winner there, I'm afraid. So big, it sucked that damn 22 pound warhead up, look. Again, Cannibal's going mergy mergy. Cannibal's merged with a Tomcat, he's not seen it. Oh, telegraph pole. No one wants that. More, another merge. Really weird merge. Now the F-18 actually carries a lot more missiles than the F-14. That's a, an interesting and a useful uh, bonus of it. Look at this SM2. Look at this. Look at this pole just chasing this guy down. No! Tomcat want to live. Oh, survived it. How about that? Bunch more Mark 60s coming in. As we get closer and closer, the Mark 60s become less and less useful. Less and less effective. Here come the last batch, the latest batch, sorry. Let's see what they're doing. No, they're not tracking. They've lost track of their targets. Their targets have either been killed or whatever by now anyway. A load more coming in. Look at this Hornet. This Hornet has got right in the in the guts of the Tomcat. And that's where Hornet wants it to be. Right in the guts of the Tomcat. The Tomcat finds it hard to get them when they're close because it's situational awareness and it senses a close range. Then we mount display. Data link's just not as good. Also, another massive advantage to the Hornets is they're right next to this AWACS. So it gives a really good picture. Whereas the Blues are miles away from this AWACS. Terrible picture for the for the Reds, you know, 200 something miles. Still, the Reds are just poning, poning, poning. Lots of Hornets up, lots of bogs up at the moment. But they're struggling to push out the power of the Tomcat, the power of the 
uh, the Mark 60, the power of everything is just really... We're going for another merge here. What happened to Cannonball? Oh, we must have got shot. Dodging missiles. You, oh, you're alive, aren't you? I can't see you. That's the thing. It all get missile warnings. Oh, oh I thought there's a blue on blue there for a second, but it's not. It's going to be a kill. No, it's not. Nice. There probably will be a lot of blue on blue or red on red when you get things this close here. Ah, this guy's going for that guy, look. Shoot him, shoot that murder bog. Shoot him with your guns or anything. We're at that point now where there's not really any... I don't know what to look at. Everyone's struggling with situational wellness problems, including the pilot. If it looks like they're dumb and they can't find each other, it's because in a 3D setting, this is a very hard thing to do. The humans will be exactly the same. Finding a guy and then working out if he's hostile or not, and then blah, 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 and dodging all the war radar warnings that are going on right now for everyone. Makes this a very difficult thing to do. Finally, this guy got SA, situational awareness. Shot this guy down with a modern Block 1 Aim9X. So the Hornets are making the lion's share of the kills right now. Oh! And the ships. And this is how the Hornets are going to have to have fight the fight. They're going to have to hide inside their SAM net, which is what they're doing pretty much. And use their modern brains while the 70s muscle... Oh! We're out of Tomcats. We are out of Tomcats. They've just ran into the SAM wall. Ah, oh, what a sad way to lose. It's almost like a giant... Posturing Arnold Schwarzenegger against a swiveling nerd and the Wernerd won because the Arnold Schwarzenegger was just too brave What a sad way to go, but I guess you got to fight with your head nowadays Telegraph pole Missed Dogfight. Oh my god. What a dogfight Look at that Wow, would not want to be there. It's not just the fact you're dogfighting. You've got all these missiles and all these missile warnings coming at you. You could die at any point from any direction. Cannibal's firing. Cannibal's uh, ACM with a Tomcat. And he's going to get him. There's no dodging that. It's got the sight of the engines. Boom. Good shot, sir. That was a double KO as well. The Tomcats have been beaten. It's so sad. It makes me so sad. Simba's firing. Simba's firing his Mark 60s off. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, it's going to be a double KO there, I think. Tomcat down. Straight into the Amram, but I think this guy's going to die as well. Is it still tracking? It is. No, it's defeated it. Very easy to defeat an old Lima. 70s, 60s, 70s Lima. Seek ahead with the countermeasures. Uh oh. No. Evaded. The uh, Hornets have worked their way out of their little, we their little weaselly nerdy hole and they're coming now and it's just Simba and two unarmed F-14As that have got to contain them. There's a bunch of Mark 60s in the air, it's good. Now the lower down we go in the air, in the atmosphere, the worse these missiles get. Same with all missiles, but especially a big fat telegraph pole like a Mark 60 gets really bad low down. And these Hornets are all low down. Look, seven, 8,000 feet, 5,000 feet, hence why you're not seeing any kills with the Mark 60 anymore. 30,000 feet, then they're, you know, Superman. Okay, we've got old Sparrow off. Terrible, terrible missile. SM2s are out again. Don't even know what they're firing at this time. Firing at nothing by the looks of it. Well, the SM2s have probably got the lion's share of the kills today, I would imagine. Okay, F-18s have broken through, broken through. It's now up for Simba. It's only Simba that can stop them. This is going to be interesting. I'm not going to help. He'll have to... Okay, we're about to see the last... Tomcat go down. Boom! You, sir, were brave. Anyone that dies supersonic can have a good, expensive grave on me. Oh, and this guy's dead, look. Oh, look at the toilets. They're, like, making out. No, they're chatting. They're not making out. They're chatting. Isn't that interesting? Probably getting the dinghy if I were you. All Tomcats are down apart from Simba. Simba is now fighting the entire of the modern early 2000s USN. Simba, we wish you good luck. Uh, that is all. Oh, this guy's got himself. You've got murder bogs coming for you, Simba. You've got murder bogs coming for you. I don't think Simba's realised what he's about to run into. Remember, Simba can't see these guys on, you know, his screen. Only I can, so he doesn't know. That, well, he'll find out. <clears throat> got a Phoenix out and he's going defensive from probably an SM2 or something. It's fast, fast Tomcat. Oh, it might be a kill. It might be a kill, Simba. Murderbog down! Murderbog down. 
The two humans have merged. Simba and Cannonball have actually merged. They don't know it because they can't see each other. But, you know, it's just not that easy. But it's interesting. Now, this is interesting. Simba's bought them enough time for the A4s to get through. Will we? Can the A4s be effective enough with their old school non-guided technology against... Whereas these guys with their guided technology would kill ground targets, targets much quicker and more reliably and easy, I can tell you that. Simba's got another shot out of his four phoenixes. I don't know what it's going for. Is it going for... No, it's... Ah! Oh, Simba! Boom! Simba's down. Simba is down. He was shot by this murder bog. There's just too many murder bogs available still. Simba, we will... Look at Simba's still firing missiles off. He's not going down without a fight. Actually, much more likely to kill his own men, but never mind, it looked good. Right. Oh, now it's really hotting up, guys. Oh, the first Mark 82s are going in. Oh, this is... You could not script this. This is wonderful stuff, guys. Paladin down. Okay, one guy down. But murder bogs are coming in. Murder bogs are 13 miles. <gasps> oh... What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Another thing down. Come on, murder bogs. Be stupid. Be stupid. I want the 70s to win at all costs. <clears throat> this one really is going to come down to the wire. Oh, the Amrams are out from uh, Cannonball Murder Bog. And that is going to be a dead A4E. He will know the missile's coming, but he is not going to be dodging any missiles. That I can tell you. Were we one life or multiple lives? You can spawn if you weren't Simba. I mean, I figured you start so far out, it's not going to make much difference anyway. But you're welcome to go again if you want. Oh, these poor A4s are getting chased off target by Cannonball. Oh, 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 Look at that! Oh, he took three or four out with him. Now this is hotting up. This really is Scotty too hotty. Oh, he missed. There's a problem with the unguided weapons. They're not 100% reliable, unlike the bogs, which are 100% reliable. As you're seeing here, there, there is a thing. It's a thing. It's a guided AGM 65, pretty old uh, 90s, 80s, 90s. Uh, naval uh, Maverick and it has a 100% kill rate at least in DTS and probably near that in real life we're about to see now a really interesting scenario happen because we've got planes merged with each we've got cast planes ground attack merged with the ground look how quickly they can fire look how quickly they can fire And look how slow the old 70s are having to bomb. Look at those bombs. Whereas look at these ripple all four out. Bam, bam, bam. And then go air to air. It's now a giant melee in the air of air to, air to ground. Look, there's a bog. There's a skyhawk. How interesting. Look at all the things die. Boom, boom, boom. Paladin bound. Paladin down. Paladin down. Paladin down. Paladin down. What a brilliant representation of what modern tech can do compared to old tech. And the, the Blues have caught up. The Blues have caught up and they're going to win it. They're going to win it by the slimmest of margins. 27 minutes into the battle. Look at that. Oh, old tech. You're just too good for your own good. That's the last missiles going in now. Oh, dearie me. Two more targets. They're not even <clears throat> bothering to attack each other. They, you know, they're just going for what they need to go for. One target left. One target left. It's still not done yet. There's still one target left. They need another bog. They've run out of Mavericks. They need the next set. I mean, there's, there's hundreds coming. There's even one being attacked. Look, he shot it from these guys' point of view. Oh, it's so close, though. Look how close the reds were. Boom. Boom. They're even dropping twin drops. Look, twin drops to make sure of the kill. Twin drop, twin drop, twin drop, twin drop. Fall down. Oh, it's going to get so close now. That's missed. The AGM's missed. 
Oh my goodness gracious me! Ah, uh, two versus one! Just get in there guys, kill it with your face. Do anything. And here comes the bombs. This guy's gonna strafe it with his guns. Missed! Missed with the gun. There's one! God damn it! Could it get any closer? There was one target each. Guns, guns, guns! Missed! Puny gun. You need a 30 mic mic. Bombs out! Bombs out! Oh my god! The 70s have won it! The 70s have won it! And game pause! Oh! Oh, my blood pressure, guys. Oh! How did they manage that? Literally, the, the next reserves were on their way. They were five miles out with their new missiles. And they won it by one hit. And this guy was getting peppered by gun, but a Vulcan with high, ex oops, high explosive ammunition is just gonna, it's just gonna bounce off that. If I was a cleverer thinking man, I would have realized they would have used their guns and I would have given them armor piercing ammunition. So I guess my bad, but I don't know. Who thinks about that? Wowee, guys. So let's summarize. A, the 70s won because it's just better than the 2000s in every way, in every way, well, almost every way. The Tomcats slaughtered the Bogs. The Bogs were just measly. They were slow, even with C5 missiles and their fancy helmet mounted displays. The power, the raw muscle of the 1970s. The, the Tomcats were twice as fast, even though they had that massive hamstring of heat blur programming in them. They were massively fast, and they got up to speed eventually, got wound up, fired a giant, old, expensive 70s telegraph poles in, slaughtered the Hornets, even when they'd been nerfed, which is fantastic. Hornets ran home, hid behind mummy's legs, um, which were these SM2s, and the Tomcats bravely strode in, faced them, not scared of anything. Got shot down, released the bogs. Simba tried to hold them up, but there was just too many bogs. Bogs got in. Literally, the last, last murder bog got hit by an aim for A4, and then it was a straight shootout to kill the targets, and by, by luck of the gods, Twin, they're dropping twin mat, twin shots like this to make sure, which you do, to make sure of the kill. And thank God they did because they got the last guy in the last few seconds. This guy was probably half a mile from shooting his last AGM. Could not write that, guys. Could not write that. Debrief from the boys, Simba. The Phoenixes did what they were supposed to do and have a nice standoff range and it proved effective. 70s won. Couldn't have asked much more, guys. Uh, Cannonball, what went wrong? Uh, I think the AI didn't properly dodge so i didn't get hit by any one of the phoenixes or Agreed. whatever yeah. was launched at me because i could just knock it and the hornets just didn't knock they, they don't have that they're just not smart enough they, they will notch but like at the last few seconds when it's too late as you know it's too late you gotta you gotta see them you gotta see them 30 seconds before launch for hitting back then to make the turn a human can do that ai can't it's just not in their makeup and probably never will do so yeah, yeah. So what got me was a sidewinder. I couldn't. I didn't see. No, obviously you can't see that. There's nothing you can do about that. Yeah. No. Fine. So close, guys. So close. Well, that's got to be the best naval battle so far. You couldn't write that, really, could you? Really good. Right. Well done, boys. I'm very proud of you. I'm going to put that together. I hope you enjoyed the 70s American versus the 2000s, early 2000s American. I hope there are some lessons to be learned there. But that's what I think personally. And I'll see you later.